From Growcom is the manager of policy and advocacy, and Richard's dropped by over 66% of Queensland drought declared. Richard, which areas are, are worst affected at the moment? In terms of horticulture, uh, the drought is really hitting home on the Grand Belt, uh, in particular, and also the Lockyer Valley. And what do those farmers produce? Uh, all sorts of different stuff. So um, your listeners not, but might not be aware, but Queensland produces one third of Australia's uh, fresh fruit and vegetables. So we're really lucky here. We have a variety of climates, and so we produce all sorts of stuff: winter veg uh, vegetables, uh, also stone fruit, apples, pears, um, all sorts of stuff. So um, Lockyer Valley more vegetable orientated. Um, on the Granite Belt, you see a lot more stone fruit and apples, yeah. but also vegetables up there too. What can or what have they done to mitigate the damage? Um, not a great deal you can do about not having any water. Mm. Um, the Granite Belt in particular is in a bit of a tight spot because uh, more than anywhere else in the state, they rely on on-farm water storages. So they capture water falling on their own farm, it runs into their own dams on their own farms, and that's what they rely on for water. And um, so they don't have a, a large river or another large reservoir or dam to draw on, and so it's been those guys that have been particularly exposed by a long-running drought. Yeah, and of course drought and fires. The place is so dry, which is great fuel for the fires. Yep. So how, how has that affected things? Obviously, we've got crops destroyed possibly in, in a lot of parts. Yes, so uh, up near Yapoon, um, that's where we've seen the major impacts of the fire on horticulture. Um, we've seen uh, banana, lychee, mango crops uh, being burnt. Uh, and these are areas that typically don't burn and haven't burnt historically. Uh, I think about 12 months ago we saw a fire just inland of Mackay, a sort of a wet tropical sort of uh, forest that burnt. Uh, also Binnabarra um, mm. burnt recently. Areas that haven't burnt before and typically that's where you find horticulture. It's where um, you know you, you have uh, a slightly wetter climate, um, more rain and more water, um, and so we found, uh, you know, fire is affecting horticulture for the first time, and, and some really odd impacts as well. So you're wearing a, a lovely pineapple dress here this morning. I am. Um, we're only just sort of learning that fire has an impact on 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 pineapples and when they flower. So um, a lot of smoke in the air can can cause pineapples to flower prematurely, and that has an effect on uh, fruit size down the track. So all these new sort of challenges that are being thrown up. So then are you finding that maybe farmers are switching crops because of climate change, because of all these threats um, to, to their livelihood? Yeah. Um, clim uh, farmers are changing crops all the time. Um, and climate is just one reason that they're doing that. Um, if you zoomed out of, out of Queensland on a map and looked down at, at where the horticulture has grown, they're little tiny islands pretty much, of, um, of climate and of soil and of water. These are the things that we require and um, it's pretty niche where you can grow horticulture and so when the climate starts moving, all of a sudden what you can grow in those certain areas does change. Um, another, again, back on the granite belt, um, particularly exposed because uh, they require, for apples for example, a certain number of chill hours, so a number of uh, you know, uh, nights where the temperature gets below a certain degree in order for the fruit to fully set and form. Um, and so that's you know, one example of, uh, of a crop and an area that is particularly uh, at risk from climate change. So then what sort of new technologies are there to help farmers? Yeah. Really good question, and so I suppose as climate does change, um, we need to develop technologies that allow us to control the environment, if that makes sense. So increasingly you're seeing uh, farmers moving towards um, protected cropping, which is a term that captures a whole range of different production systems uh, under netting, for example, or into greenhouses. Um, and so farmers will be moving toward those sorts of technologies so they can control their environment because it's less predictable. Um, into the future, um, there's a concept called vertical farming, and so that's where uh, you bring uh, the growth of fruit and vegetables inside, uh, hydroponically, and also under artificial lighting. Um, you can grow it in a shed, right? And you can grow it anywhere. Um, it looks a bit like what you'd rely on if you're living on Mars. Um, 
and it's viable and people are producing in this way already um, so it's the future I suppose it is the future we're surrounded by fresh fruit and veggies aren't they aren't we and then when you say artificial we sort of think oh no but um, it, it, it doesn't change the fruit no at all no, the, I mean the genetic genetics are the same um, it's still in fact they're being you know um, fed a very specific and tailored um, uh, food I suppose uh, through the water uh, hydroponically so um, just as good for you. Yeah. I'm talking to Richard Shannon from Grocrom here at the uh, Saturday Fresh Markets at Rock Lee, and we're just discussing about the drought situation, of course, and the fires and how hard hit our producers have been. How can we make sure, uh, I suppose, in these tough times, that we are buying Queensland product wherever possible? A good question. I mentioned earlier that one third of Australia's horticulture is grown in Queensland. We've got a variety of uh, growing regions with different climates, so we produce all sorts of stuff. Um, I suppose my advice then wouldn't be necessarily to look for a specific fruit or vegetable to buy. Um, you should uh, just buy lots <laughs> of fresh fruit and vegetable. Um, it's good for growers, it's good for the state economy, it's good for you. Um, yes. So the more fresh fruit and vegetables you can buy, the better. Uh, I'd encourage consumers to, uh, to inspect uh, when they're in the shop um, labels where they can to work out where it's from. I mean, before you go to the shop, um, just jump online. There's plenty of resources. You can find what's in season right now. Yeah, all right. Some uh, good advice there. And there's plenty of nice uh, produce, Queensland produce here at the Saturday Fresh Markets at Rock Lee. Uh, Richard Shannon from Grocom, thank you so much for dropping by. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. It is a 20 past seven on...